everybody, this is Bryce Machine Bates of Team Evil Geniuses, and this is another replay review. Today's replay is going to be a Zerg vs. Terran uh, on Daybreak against a fellow practice partner, Everrise. So let's go ahead and jump into the game. All right, let's go ahead and get this started. Uh, this is going to be, as I said before, ZVT on Daybreak. Daybreak being a pretty decent map for the matchup. I think, once again, like most players just kind of prefer this map of, of every single race and just about every single matchup. Uh, some of the, the key points of the map, there's these destructible rocks in the center of the uh, map. It's able to really just kind of reduce early timings, but later on if you're trying to go for some sort of like a late game ultralist composition or even broodlords and you're trying to reduce the travel time between uh, the sort of center fourth bases, uh, it's something that a lot of Zergs like to destroy. And at the same, same time, uh, a lot of Terrans are trying to hit uh, Marine tank timings before Broodlords will choose to go ahead uh, and engage it. There's a ramp leading into the main, ramps leading to the natural, third. Uh, so sort of a uh, standard map, uh, you know, for, for the, you know, this particular matchup. Uh, the Entranceway of the natural is kind of big, but not really huge. So Hellion play uh, doesn't, you know, it's it's not impossible to deal with here, especially because if you're able to go ahead, uh, open with the four queen opening like I do, and then spread your creep down to uh, this ramp leading outside the natural, it's pretty easy to, to go ahead and fend off those early uh, timings. So, all right, as we see here, going to go ahead and start with a 15 hatchery expand. Uh, it's pretty pretty standard. Just about every single Zerg opens hatchery first, and just about all the Zergs that open hatchery first open 15 hatchery. As we see here, it turns at 15 supply. Uh, still no uh, refinery going down, so this is going to most definitely be a one racks expand. Uh, typically, when I follow up my 15 hatchery, I, I open with a uh, 15 pool, but this game I actually open for a 16 pool, and this is because uh, this is sort of a, a new timing that I'm experimenting with. Uh, what you do is you actually open your standard 15 hatchery, uh, 16 pool, overlord on 17, and then save larva after that. This drone is going to go ahead, scout out uh, the Zelnaga watchtower to look for any sort of incoming marines, SCVs, that could hint towards a two racks all in, in which case I could go ahead and pull drones at this point, fend off the two racks, but that is not the case this game. Uh, and it, you'll notice I'm just going ahead and saving my larva here. Now, m most Zergs by now would have made that 18th drone and definitely would have been producing you know, more and more drones by this point. But by saving this larva, I'm allowing myself to hit uh, sort of a small Zergling uh, timing window with eight lings. So all four of my larva pop as the pool uh, completes, making eight Zerglings, starting my two queens. And then after these eight lings, I'm just going to go uh, immediately back to drone production. So here, uh, the bunker obviously was just a fake, force him to cancel, lose some minerals. Uh, and meanwhile, he's just going that one racks expand on the low ground, producing nothing, non-stop marines. Uh, and I'm able to, to go ahead, pick off the SCV at the tower, and try to regroup the rest of my zerglings, and try to you know possibly pick off a few marines here. If he, played it uh, too greedy and just went ahead and made a couple marines, I'd be uh, allowed to go ahead and engage and get a better trade here. As is, these four regroup with the, or three regroup with the fourth marine, but I'm still getting a very cost-effective trade here. I'm able to go ahead, pick off four marines for these eight zerglings. I have two left over that are able to go ahead, run in here, scout the fifth marine. So I'm pretty, uh, pretty sure it's just going to be a one axe expand here, which is exactly what it's going to be. And as I said before, if they just do the standard sort of two marine bunker, uh, you can actually a lot of times force a cancel on this command center. So it's pretty nice. Um, other than that, I've got my fourth queen produced. I've just been building drones nonstop here. I'm starting to hit the tipping point where I'm able to produce a lot of drones simultaneously. 29, 31 drones, 22. Um, as you see here, going ahead, running my fourth queen, or third queen rather, down to the natural. I want to try to spread this creep as quickly as possible so I can go ahead, secure the fourth or the third base and the fourth base, defend early sort of Hellion harass and just defend any kind of engagements uh, altogether. Zerglings uh, engage so much uh, qu quicker on creep so it allows you to get a lot more cost-effective trades with them. 
uh, here we go. Uh, as my fourth, uh, third, or first and second Vespian geysers get up, I, I take both of them actually at 44 supply. It's becoming pretty common here. And then at around the 50 supply mark, I'm able to go ahead and put down my first macro hatchery. Um, so as we see here, just mining my early Vespian. Uh, as soon as I get 100 Vespian, I can go ahead and actually start this zergling speed. Uh, and then once the zergling speed started, I typically take a third Vespian geyser, and I'll produce two evolution chambers. Now as this third Vespian geyser gets up, uh, and as these two evolution chambers complete, I should be close to 250 gas and 250 minerals, and that's going to allow me to go ahead, get my melee and my armor timed out uh, simultaneously and just really just uh, have these early zergling upgrades for this particular matchup. Uh, most zergs tend to be very zergling centric. Uh, they're very cheap units. They can be traded very cost effectively, especially in uh, when you group them with banelings against marines. Uh, so it tends to be the, the standard play other than like opening roach in every other matchup. So I'm able to go ahead, take my fourth base. Uh, as I start these two upgrades, my next 100 gas should go towards layer here pretty quickly. And I'm also taking a fourth base simultaneously. I realize that because he does not have these Hellions, or those early Hellions, he doesn't really have the map control he should. So I'm able to go ahead and kind of abuse this early creep spread with these, uh, the fourth, third and fourth queen that I was able to make, spread creep to my third. Um, and I have my Zelnaga Watchtower. Now that Zergling Speed's close to finishing up, yeah, it is finished up, I'm able to go ahead and get some pretty good scouting. So as we see here, he's got his combat shields going. Uh, Stim just now starting, so it's not really going to hit for this timing, but this is a, a pretty standard opening for, for Terran here. He's just going to try to go ahead, harass my third, put some pressure on it, and force either a cancel or force a, a good amount of Zerglings to be traded in order to secure it. And so I was able to go ahead and scout that there with some Zerglings. We've got a lot of Zerglings in production. Uh, I recognize that he is, in fact, about to go ahead uh, and attack over here. So I need to start grouping units and try to engage as quickly as possible. Oh, we lose some Zerglings there. A little unfortunate. Bad rally points. But I'm able to go ahead and wait for him to get on creep so I can get the most cost-effective trade. Uh, and I really just want to delay and try to save this third however possible. So I go ahead. Uh, and by the time I'm able to get a good surround like this, uh, he's forced to either focus down the hatchery or try to get trade for, trades for these marines. Uh, little does he know, I'm able to just go ahead, rally in a few banelings, and clean up uh, the marines before the hatcheries actually fall. So it was pretty, uh, pretty fortunate for me there. It could have uh, gone mu much worse, actually. But as my layer completes, first thing I do is I start my infestation pit. I should be starting these 2 2 upgrades here pretty quickly, and then uh, once you're able to fend off a timing attack like that, your initial response should always be drone, drone, drone. He just wasted a lot of resources on you know, uh, building a force that was unable to accomplish really a, a whole lot at that point. If I would have lost this third, then I'd be forced to go ahead and produce units, just try to go ahead and re-secure it. But as is, I've got a little bit of a droning window here, and so I try to take full advantage of it. You'll notice I'm at 70 harvest harvesters to his 54. Uh, which is pretty significant. He's gone ahead here, built a third command center, um, but I have a Zergling uh, very well placed over here to where once he goes ahead, tries to secure this third, it will be scouted and I'll know uh, everything about it pretty much. Uh, another thing is once uh, the mid game tends to hit, it's very common for a lot of Terrans to have these sort of uh, very like drop centric armies. So uh, you'll notice I have a spine crawler place, second one building, zerglings here along with banelings. And so I really want to make sure I'm able to fend off these early drops. Um, but just by seeing that, I realize with two dropships, I don't have enough to go ahead uh, and defend this uh, main. And he's actually doing a good job of moving in here with a simultaneous force. He's going to go ahead and try and actually just pick off my creep spread and possibly pick off my third. So. Go ahead, I'm able to fend off this drop inside the main, but I recognize I'm about to lose the third, so I want to at least get a good trade for it. Baneling speed's completed, and I'm able to kill off all the, the marines, but at the cost of a third base. So a lot of zergs right now would have opted to go ahead, 
try to hit like an all-in timing attack, but I recognize, uh, you know, I got ahead early because I was able to go ahead and save that third. So as long as I don't overreact, I play defensive, and I double expand, I should put myself uh, back into the game pretty easily here. So that's exactly what I do. My investors finish up. I posture on the map, just kind of trying to scare him with no real intention of actually engaging anything, showing my investors. And so he's going to be forced to sit back here, put up bunkers, uh, siege tanks. And you know what I'm always looking for is trying to force a planetary fortress at the third instead of an orbital. I don't think that's actually going to be the case here. Um, but I'm really just kind of just simultaneously double expanding here and just moving along with my tech. 2-2 two -two is about to complete. I have the infester count that I want for hive tech. Uh, those six infestors, typically you want to get somewhere between like seven and nine. Um, but for the moment, six is good enough to go ahead and defend any sort of uh, like basically a marine siege tank timing attack that could hit. And my third should just about be up online. Um, one thing that's pretty interesting about this map is it's good for both Ultralis and Broodward play, as I said earlier. Because of the short distance between the, the middle bases, Broodward pushes can be pretty strong, but it's also a very open map, and it allows for a lot of different engagement angles. So Ultralis work completely fine here as well. And because I haven't been building a Spire, I'm assuming I'm going to actually just be opening Ultralis cavern. Uh, I'm still just focusing on fending off these drops, leaving a good clump of zergling baneling uh, along with spine crawler in my main. And yep, there we go. Ultralis cavern, adrenal glands, 3-3 three, three should start here soon. Uh, and just trying to go ahead and secure the Vespian geysers at my fourth. Meanwhile, it looks like he's going to actually just try to hit some sort of a, a marine siege timing. And by having this uh, good creep spread out here, I'm forcing uh, a lot of scans in order for him to go ahead and, and be able to fend off this creep and get the engagements that he wants. As I said before, because especially Ling Baneling is so much quicker on creep, you always want to force the Terran opponent to engage on creep if possible. So here we go, Ultralis Cavern is about to complete. I'm at my 93 harvester count, uh, adrenal glands producing, but I realize that I'm not going to have Ultralis up in time to be able to go ahead and fend off this timing attack. So I'm forced to produce 50 Zerglings at once and sack this fourth base. Now, this is actually completely fine as long as I'm able to go ahead and get a tech advantage in the next engagement. And with Marine's Siege Tank, his upgrades are only 1-1. One, one. I'm starting my 3-3. Three, three. Uh, I've gone ahead and secured uh, another fourth that should be up pretty quickly. And as long as uh, I'm able to get engage here before he moves back and get a good trade, I should get uh, or I should get the advantage that I'm looking for. So six Ultralis in production. Ultralis are extremely good against uh, Marine Siege Tanks, especially on Creep, just much like uh, Ling and Fester. So I'm really just kind of focusing him to dedicate his units here. Uh, loses a few Marines there. Nothing really too major, but finally, uh, after all this, the Ultralis are out. Now it's really important that as Zerg especially, you're engaging from multiple angles. Uh, I really want to try to get the the surface area uh, of every single engagement that I uh, take. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split up my forces here. I'm going to throw three Ultralis and a handful of Zerglings on this side, the rest on this side. Engage with the Ultralis first because they take most of the splash damage from the siege tanks. Uh, and then just force uh, my Banelings to be on move command. Focus my Fungals on top of the bio. And I'm able to actually clean this up without too much of a problem at all. So Bird of the Infestors got uh, more fungals. It's really unfortunate for him because he didn't recognize that I was able to just burrow my infestors and hide them. So I was able to get the fungals I want. And I'm also able to go ahead and trap all of his uh, medevacs out here. And that's really cost effective for me. Like, uh, medevacs are extremely expensive at 100 minerals, 100 gas uh, per, uh, you know, uh, per medevac. So it's not really good if you uh, is forced to go ahead and lose off all of those, and it's going to force a lot more medevac production from a starport. As I said before, I'd gone ahead and secured my fourth. I should also be taking a fifth uh, immediately. And once you get a really heavy ultras composition, you're going to force a lot of marauders, uh, or at least you should be. So yeah, as we see here, Evera is going ahead, producing marauders, adding them into his composition, throwing down three more barracks with tech labs. 
So the first thing a Zerg should be thinking is, I need to eventually have the possibility of a tech switch. And so that's exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, you look in the main, I throw down two spires, one for upgrades, one to morph into greater spire. And I want to at least have a possibility of eventually uh, you know, exchanging and transitioning to, ultra, or to Broodlord and catching him on a very uh, Marauder-centric composition. So as we see here, I'm able to go ahead, utilize this 5-3 finally, uh, engage at a point in which he wasn't ready for, his planetary wasn't up yet, and I'm just trying to focus on hitting the fungals on the bio, and Ultralis are, can be very good, especially in unison with Infestors and Zerglings against Marauders. It's when Marauders are able to go ahead and actually just kite and, and fall back uh, that Ultralis become extremely difficult to go ahead and, uh, or that Marauders become rather extremely difficult to engage. So I am actually able to go ahead and focus down this planetary, even with the repair, with the help of some Infested Terrans and Zerglings, uh, immediately before all of my Ultralis fall. Now, as I said before, I've gone ahead and secured this fifth, trying to take a sixth down here that I assume will probably end up uh, falling. But it's more just I'm hoping that he doesn't actually scout it. Uh, and you'll look in my production tab, producing more Ultralis, more Zerglings, more Infestors. I was able to actually retreat with the Infestors I had. Uh, so they're actually over here. Just trying to build up more energy uh, in order to go ahead and fend off these timings. And once again, because I had to throw all of my units away to go ahead and kill off that fourth of the Terran, uh, I don't really have what it takes to go ahead and fend this off quite yet until these Banelings morph, until my Ultralis get out. So. Uh, able to go ahead and have to, to lose that base at the same time. But, you know, finally I have a fourth. He's just now taken his fourth uh, floating orbital. And I have this hidden fifth down here that I'm just kind of hoping doesn't have, uh, or doesn't get scouted. But even if it does, I have decent creep spread because of this tumor heading over to it. So I wouldn't really be in bad position here. Gone ahead, morphed my greater spire, started uh, air armor. And if you just look at the supplies in the, in the income tab, uh, I have 188 supply, 187 with better tech, better units, better upgrades uh, to his 143. I have much higher uh, income, and I'm able to just go ahead and finally overrun the forest, and he recognizes that it's GG. All right, guys. Uh, once again, I am Bryce Machine Bates of Team Evil Geniuses. If you guys, uh, and this has been another replay review. If you guys enjoyed this, just go ahead and head on over to evilgeniuses.net and you can check out this replay view, or review and a lot of others like it. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys very much and I hope you enjoyed it.